Yeah, it's great to get a win. To be uh, 10 and 4 this time of year is great for the footy club and a real positive boost for the boys and the coaches to, uh, you know, we're on the right track. Um, there's only a couple of points in it, three quarter time. What sort of spurred the boys on the last quarter to make sure they come out and kick three in a row? Yeah, the leadership group really, you know, wanted to have a strong performance for the whole game, and uh, we we had patches where we were very good through the first three quarters, and then uh, they really put it on each other in that last quarter. The one to start well and you know to kick two or three goals really quickly and uh, get a bit of a gap was nice. So it was a pleasing effort for them as well. They learn about when it's not Richmond, when it's not Melbourne, you still have to turn up to play calm. So that's the big message. From um, the I think it's not just Carlton, like you said, I think it's all the teams, Roach. I think uh, the evenness of the comp and you saw on the weekend and some of the results and how close they were and um, some people wouldn't have picked them. I think I got three of my tips this week. So, uh, like, the evenness of the comp is so, is so even and for for us to show some maturity, to win a game like that in the past that we probably would have lost um, and to get four go- four wins in a row has been great for, for our group. So how's close is that getting to that unconditional theme that Ken put on the agenda last week? How much of it was unconditional for you and what's still missing? Look, that's been our message the last five or six weeks now. We've been down that path and the players are getting better, better understandings of what it looks like and what it doesn't and uh, we'll have our review today and we'll go through some edits which are, are very, very good and we'll have some we need to improve on. That's no different from any week. Um, the challenge is for us to get the more unconditional than conditional. Uh, how's Jasper? Uh, look, Jasper's tested fine this morning, so um, he'll train during the week and we'll see how he pulls up and see if he gets through and um, he'll be available for selection, as far as I know. Is it just hamstring tightness? Or the... Yeah, tightness. He was on my plane coming back last night and he said he felt something there and didn't want to go any harder, so he just stopped and walked off. Talk about Paddy Ryder. He didn't have the best game, but he still got the job done in the end. Um, he said on radio that he's got a long voice best is in front of him still. Um, how do you feel about back after the season? Uh, Paddy's form's best form's definitely in front of him. He's had some patches where he's been brilliant. Um, he's been, been some uh, uh, times when he hasn't been as good as he should have been. So, look, he's just getting back in some good work on the training track. Um, hopefully we see the benefits of that in the next three or four weeks because uh, if he gets up and going, we're even better stop his team, which is great. As the Achilles, is that improving or is it just going to be managed? Uh, you can normally tell him by the end of the game he's limping a lot, but uh, last two weeks he hasn't limped at all. So he's been um, he's been very diligent in his rehab, getting that right. Ice is at home, has a wheat bag on during a game, so he's uh, doing everything he can to get it through, and he's doing a good job at the moment. In terms of uh, the next month, what flexibility have you got as coaches to try some things so you're not caught short in September like other teams have been? Probably not much flexibility, not with, uh, like I said before, how even the comp is and um, you know, results going the way they do and you've got to put your best team out there all the time. In saying that, we've uh, you know, got some, we played Jack Trengove down back this week and, and Homps come in and showed he can play as well, so uh, you still have to find some people. Aidan Johnson and Jake Need, we'd like to see them at some stage, you know, play some forward time, Jack Watts again. Um, so we'll be looking at all those players and like you said, if we can have 25 to 30 going into the later part of the year, you know, up and ready to go, it will bodes well for playing well. What about also those 22 that you play, can you look at them in some different roles as well during a game? Oh, look, look, option opening up for you? It's there, but you'd want to be in front by a bit to start playing around with that kind of stuff. And um, for us at the moment, we're just concentrating, you know, all our focus on St Kilda, they were super over the game watching it and playing against Melbourne and they were uh, they were very good for the whole game so look if we get some opportunities to do that reach we will but if we don't we'll uh, stay the status quo. What are your thoughts heading into next weekend's game Look the, um, last year's game the stats say they should have beaten us we got very lucky towards the end of the game kicked two goals in under a minute um, don't want to be doing that against St Kilda or any team so they were very good against Melbourne. They spread really well. They, they pressured the whole game, and uh, their goal kicking was a lot better than it had been all the year. They've, I think it's only the second or third time they kicked more goals and points for the whole year. So, um, we we'll have to be at our best. And I said they are both um, to get the result. Well, you said the competition's been pretty even, um, particularly after this game on the weekend. Are you feeling confident heading into the weekend? 
oh, there's, there is some confidence within our group at the moment, which is good. Um, every team wants some momentum going into games and going in from week to week. And our momentum at the moment was six from seven. So we're, we're playing pretty well. The one we lost was three points down in Tasmania. So we're around the mark at the moment. But um, momentum's a funny thing. You've got to make the most of it when you got it. And hopefully we can do that. And Trengo, will he play again on the weekend? Oh, look, selection's later in the week. But, you know, Jack did some great things. And it's a great story for our club and himself to, to get back and to play AFL again. And, um, look, selection will be later in the week. But he's done everything he can to keep his spot. What about the Jack Watts watch? Where's that? Was it for you guys? You guys seem to talk about it more than us. <laughs> Look, uh, Watsy was very competitive again yesterday. The SNFL apparently uh, kicked two goals, three. It was really good in the air, got the ball to ground. Pressure was up, so uh, Matty Loken was really happy with his effort. And um, that's two weeks in a row now. He's shown some really good effort down there. And Look, he just keeps competing, and I'm sure an opportunity will come at some stage. Is it just looking at him as a forward, or could you look at him in another role? Well, he has been playing a lot of our roles in our forward line. We've probably set him a little bit more in the Magpies into one role. Um, but we think we need our flexibility with all our forwards to play everywhere. So for him to be able to play multiple positions is very important for us. Can you play both him and Marshall at the same time? Or is it just strictly one or the other now? Uh, well, how, how Westhoff's been going as a forward the last three weeks, uh, sorry, four weeks, nine goals in four games. He's been very, very handy for us down there. Um, I don't think we can play four tools down there. Um, three would be the max, and whoever's playing better will play. So that brings over the debate and use what somewhere else like on a wing? Possibly, but we've got some good wingmen. Pollock's been in great form, probably his, one of his best years he's had. Um, Ebert's moved out there, Motlop, Westhoff's gone through there as well, and Boak. So there's some real flexibility through all positions at the moment, which is great for our club. And um, look, what's he knows what he's got to do, and he'll, he'll try to keep doing it. What does that sort of mean for his career, though? You know, Look, I think Watts is here for, I'm not sure what his contract was, three or four years, so um, he's been great. He's been great for our group. He's a great person, um, tries to do everything right on the footy field, does everything right off the field. Look, it takes a while for new people to settle into football clubs, and you've seen with Mott Lobb, you've seen with Rockliffe, they even played two or three SNFL games as well. It takes a while to fit in and find where you fit, so he's still finding that, finding his feet in that area, and we'll try and fast track as much as possible, but um, look, his future looks fine here to me. Brendan, has the objective changed from just making finals to now seizing opportunity in the top four? It's not quite in finals yet, are we? Ten, ten's not quite there. Um, we're in a good position we can be in at this stage of the year and we, we'll push forward to finals. We're aiming for that and um, we'll assess our expectations when we get there. You've played alongside some stars, you've coached some stars. Where does Robbie Gray sit in those, uh, those players that you've played in? I've played, coached and coached Robbie, coached against and coached Robbie. Um, look, Robbie's right up there. I don't think he gets accolades over the border as much as he probably should, but um, look, he's uh, one of the best players I've seen. What he can do with the ball um, in the air, on the ground, getting around people, um, helping his teammates, it's second to none. So he's right up there with one of the best. Without him, do you reckon you win that game on the weekend? I think we do. We have other people to step up. Our forward line's quite dynamic and we've got a lot of options down there. Um, if he doesn't play down there, maybe Wingo goes down and kicks two or three for us. I know he kicked two from the midfield, but he can definitely do that role as well. So I think we've got enough potency in our forward line to cover for him if he didn't play. Brendan, inside the world, what did that moment with Darcy Byrne-Jones do to the West Hill group in terms of... If, even if it was just a reminder of what's to be expected, what's it actually done for the rest of the group? Um, it's probably giving clear expectation of our standards. The leadership group have been um, super in developing them and then um, for them to implement that for a player that's actually playing in our side um, and a strong player in our back line was um, a big message to the rest of the group. So, um, like you said, it sends a message to everyone and we are, we've we lifted our standards as a club and we're not accepting anything below them. Would it sit unflexible, inflexible in that no matter who it will be, the same penalty will apply? I assume so. And is that to build a culture towards the Yeah, I think if you heard Ken the other day on um, on the couch, he talked about culture a lot and um, our culture at this club is not many people leave our club, which is a good thing. So we've got a great culture there um, and we're still developing our culture within our football club. So 
Uh, our, our leaders have driven that this year with Jared Murphy, so um, they'll keep driving that and if standards aren't met, there'll be consequences.